Welcome to the Sugar Science. I'm Monica Wesley, and I have the pleasure of speaking to uh, Dr. Yang Zhao. He is the CEO of Tiani, and he is uh, involved in the creation of a stem cell educator. And we're going to talk to him about his uh, clinical work, his clinical trials that are underway in China and in the U.S., as well as you know um, some of the, his previous work that's brought him up to this point. And what's the latest and greatest in terms of how the trials are uh, progressing? So, welcome, uh, Dr. Zhao. Yeah, thank you, Monica, for this opportunity um, to introduce stem cell educated therapy to the public. Thank you uh, for talking with us. I wanted to just yeah. see. Uh, I wanted to, to just uh, have you uh, discuss with our audience. You know, what is your sort of your background, your bio, and what brought you to this uh, to this space? Yeah, it's, um, you know, uh, before I moved to the States, I'm a physician doctor uh, working in the clinic. Try to find a cure for human disease is my long-term uh, interest when I do the medical school, you know. So, you know, I think uh, immunology is the key issue, you know, to provide an answer to treat human disease. That's why I created my clinical practice. I pursue my master. Uh, in immunology, then to the PhD in immunology in Shanghai. And in 2000, uh, you know, I moved to uh, University of Chicago to postdoc training. So at that time, you know, I found uh, a new type of stem cell from a uh, human cord blood. So that's, um, I, in the last over 20 years, I focused on these stem cells and, you know, pursue their preclinical studies, animal studies, then translated to clinical studies, you know. Uh, when I work at the University of Illinois at Chicago, because I'm in, uh, in section endocrinology, you know, I focus on type 1 diabetes. You know, that's an autoimmune disease. Uh, you know, it's, uh, we can use the stem cell, you know, potentially to correct autoimmunity, improve the cell regeneration. You know, that's, uh, we started clinical trials uh, in 2010, then step by step, they move forward mm -hmm. now. So you started you started entering into the clinical trials, human trials in 2010, and so yeah. now it's 10 years later. And so, what has transpired during that time period? You know, over the last 10 years, we did uh, clinical trials through multi-center international clinical trials in China, uh, several hospitals uh, in China, uh, also uh, in Spain. Uh, a couple years ago, we. You know, I moved my lab to New Jersey, you know, Hank Second Medical Center. We set up our clinical trials in the United States. We got FDA approval. So, you know, uh, over the last 10 years, the multi center clinical trials demonstrated uh, the stem cell therapy, the safety, also the clinical efficacy to correct the autoimmunity and improve beta cell regeneration. And can you describe this? this um you know, uh, technology or actually the, the uh, stem cell educator itself? What is it, uh, how, how large is it? What is it, uh, how is it set up and how does it work? You know, uh, the, the stem cell educator therapy is, uh, is unique technology or we, we patented this. Uh, it's, uh, use the, let me show you here, it's, uh, you know, you know, we have the device. This is the stem cell kit device, which is classified medical device. We got to have the approval for this. And, um, the stem cells from cord blood, they, you know, grow inside the, the device, on each layers, okay? You know, uh, when we do the clinical treatment, we use the first machine that isolated the patient immune cells from purple blood, okay? Then we transfer into the device. The stem cell can directly uh, correct the ways of the patient immune cells and correct their function defects. Then after the treatment, uh, the stem cell treated the patient's own cell returned to the patient's blood. You know, uh, the stem cell stay in the device, not transplant into the device. Yes. Only stem cell treated the patient's own cell returned to the blood. So that's the, this technology is very safe. It's an autologous product. So how, oh, sorry. Good. So how, how much, um, so then we're talking about the, the newest trial is looking at children. So you have to, is, is it almost like the patient undergoes, um, you know, uh, 
almost like a dialysis sort of treatment? How long does that treatment last? And uh, how much blood, you know, flows through the stem cell educators, things like that? Yeah, it's a, yeah, basically the principle like uh, dialysis, okay, the patient uh, just stay down there, um, you know, uh, use a needle, just draw the blood, uh, isolate the, uh, you know, the, the blood from a peripheral, okay. So, you know, uh, each process, because this continue process, each, you know, um, uh, set is only just uh, one cup of blood, 120 five ml blood, small volume of blood. Okay, the machine that can spin down the, you know, the immune cells, then automatically return the red cells or, or plasma, only isolate the immune cells because that's the, the issue inside this white blood cells, okay? So we can isolate this immune cells transferring the device, okay? The whole procedure, uh, you know, take about, uh, for our first part is uh, around the five six hours depends the the, the person okay uh, use the closed loop system the whole procedure take about eight to nine hours okay so you know based on the the procedure you know stem cell care therapy has a two uh, approach why is it we call closed loop system you know uh, we treat the patient at the bedside okay we isolate the patient the immune cells loading to the educator treat it at the better side, then return to the patient's blood. This continues to circulate, okay? Another approach we call the open loop system. You know, we, we draw the patient a, a white blood cells, we send it to the GMP lab, you know, uh, load into the educator device, then after 70 hours overnight culture, and next day we collect, refuse, infuse back to the patient, okay? That's a little bit longer time. Yeah. And then, so what about the, uh, so these are new onset, um, you know, uh, patients, right? This is the patients that, that were, ver were successful. You know, uh, for our first uh, um, trial, um, you know, that's 2010, this is a long-standing established type 1 diabetes, not a new onset, okay? You know, um, some patient uh, even have 20 uh, or 20 years top one. Uh, some is 15 years, 70 years, okay. So basically their uh, allied beta cell function totally destroyed, okay. No C-peptide left over. Even you give a high sugar challenge, okay. You don't have a, you know, a beta cell, um, uh, you know, the fasting, no, no C-peptide detection in the purple blood, okay. Yeah. Yeah, come from their beta cell function totally gone. Okay, so that's why we, we recruited those severe, long-standing type one diabetic patients. We treated with stem cell therapy. You know, we do say after a couple of months later, we see their C peptide increased. You know, the sugar control getting better. You know, because uh, C peptide is a byproduct for insulin production. You know, uh, C peptide come from endogenous, you know, insulin. If you yes. have better recovery, so that's uh, you know uh, we demonstrate that even long-standing top one diabetic patient uh, after receiving stem cell therapy, we show the improvement in the beta cell regeneration. Yeah, so CPAP as a proxy. So yeah. I just wonder um, what about so if we're talking about now, if we're talking about the long-term patients, you know they've had diabetes for many years you expose them to this, uh, treat them with the stem cell educator, and then you see a um, return of C-peptide and, and better control. Um, but it, don't you, um, do you, what about the immune cells, the memory cells? You know, because they're, they're lodged in the lymph nodes and so maybe not be in circulation, right? So how, how do you explain that? What, what you know, might happen think, with them? Yeah, the advantage for stem cell therapy, I think uh, we, through our clinical uh, study, uh, the collaboration with uh, Dr. Delgado uh, at the University of Oviedo in Spain, uh, we did a, a clinical test on the autoimmune memory cell, T cells, okay? You know, because autoimmune memory T cell is like a stubborn block. You just mentioned, you know, they they 
stay inside the pancreatic lymph node. Yeah. You know, they just kill the some newly generated beta cells. You know, they can. You know, that's a fundamental issue. Can you know any approach to treat top one must address this? Uh, you know, uh, this issue can. Yes. So, you know, we did some studies, uh, clinical studies, also some basic research in my lab. So we found stem cell decay therapy can correct these autoimmunities. So, you know, uh, you know, we demonstrated, you know, like naive cells percentage increase, just effect memory, both CD4, CD8, T cells, they declined. Central memory increased. So the reason why, you know, stem cell decay therapy can, you know, clear this autoimmunity Memory, you know, um, the major molecule uh, is uh, on the memory cell is CCR7. Okay. Yeah. If the the effect memory T cells, you know, increase the CCR7 expression on the T cells, they can, you know, attach to lympho vessel. They can circulate it uh, into the you know lymph circulation, then get out from the pancreatic lymph node. Okay. So we did some studies. We demonstrated that, uh, you know, after treatment uh, uh, with the stem cell, the CCR7 expression dramatically improved in Taiwan like patient. Hmm. So that's the reason we think, uh, you know, a stem cell therapy can remove these autoimmune memory cells from a pancreatic uh, uh, lymph node, or you know, restore the microenvironment in pancreatic islet. Then leading to the, you know, regeneration of beta cells function, yeah. Um, yeah, because that's one of the major, you know, considerations is, okay, well, now you have re-educated the immune system and yeah. all is well, and, and perhaps maybe some of these um, beta cells that are sort of just not operating now can start to function again, and then when they start functioning again, then the immune system sort of wakes up and attacks again. So... Yeah. If, so what you're saying then is, in in, um, in your data or you've seen in your trials that the you know the memory autoimmunity is is mitigated also. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. It's very interesting. Um, okay. And then so let's. What about this newest clinical trials? If we go to clinicaltrials.gov, we can see reversal of type one diabetes in children by stem cell educator therapy. And it was first posted November 27th in 2013, and then the last update was posted on February 5th, 2019. How's that, how's that study going here in the U.S.? I see your second collaborator is, you have a collaborator at um, the second uh, Shangya uh, Hospital of Central South University, and then you also have, you know, the, I guess the initial infer, um, clinical trials are based in New Jersey in the U.S. Is that right? It's uh, for the children trial, uh, that children trial, um, through the collaboration with uh, Dr. Zhu Guangzhou at the Second Xiangya Hospital uh, okay. in South, uh, Central South University in Changsha, in China. Okay. So, you know, uh, we treated 25 uh, top one diabetic children, you know, yeah. aged from three years old to 17 years old. We also have control group, uh, you know, receive the conventional insulin therapy. You now we have two years follow up data. So the, mm-hmm. uh, the paper already finished in the process uh, publication. Um, you know, this uh, clinical trials demonstrated the safety uh, and the clinical efficacy uh, in uh, top one diabetic children. You know, no children show any. Uh, you know, significant side effects, well tolerated appro- approach. Okay. Also, the Africa's data demonstrated 64% uh, uh, top one diabetic children show good response. Okay. They can postpone the decline, uh, improve the sugar control, reduce the insulin dosage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you can see um, the children were six years to 14 years. And, and you're inclusion criteria where they had at least one autoantibody, they were ages three to 18, and they, you know, basically had written consent. Um, so they definitely had uh, some auto um, antibodies. And then 
did you see any changes in those autoantibodies after treatment? Yes, we monitor the uh, immune markers, autoantibodies or T cell markers after treatment. Uh, they show improvement. You know, also we test the, the autoimmune memory T cells in these children, diabetic children, before and after receiving stem cell chemotherapy. We show a uh, similar result as a uh, you just mentioned uh, the Spanish trial in yeah, adult uh, type 1 diabetic uh, patient. Mm -hmm. So the effect of memory T cells declined, uh, naive T cells percentage increased. And so was there any change? I, I see that the uh, autoantibodies you tested for, for entry into the study were IA2, GAD, ICA, zinc transporter 8, and IAA. Was there any, um, did you see any patterns of, uh, you know, that that's different ones, different autoantibodies were more affected by the stem cell educator, or was it just all of them across the board declined in tighter or just gone on totally? Uh, that's a good question. You know, um, we analyze the data, uh, you know, uh, if different patients have a different antibodies, some have just single antibody, some have two, some have three. You know, we analyze data, we show some interesting uh, you know, uh, data show, you know, some patient with like I2 or zinc show good response, you know, because it's a small, uh, you know, uh, size of a patient. So we are going to expand the trial, saying, you know, further explore this phenomenon, you know, what type of antibody party group has a good response, you know, we're going to explore, further explore, explore this, yeah. Yeah, um, because it's becoming more clear, it's pretty accepted now that uh, diabetes, type 1 diabetes is a heterogeneous uh, yes. disease in nature. And um, I think, and there's many ways um, for an individual to, to get type 1 diabetes. So yeah, I think that'd be important to look at exactly which autoantibodies either you know, decrease in titer or disappear altogether. It'd be really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, and so then where, so this study, this was uh, a seven-year a seven year study, is that right? Uh, you know, the you know, this two years follow-up studies. Okay. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, we, we, we summarize the, you know, the work, you know, we, you know, we, we try to publish this, uh, you know, uh, hopefully soon, yeah. Okay. And then what, um, can you just comment on any other trials that are ongoing? You know, we have an a ongoing uh, trial at Hackensack University Medical Center in New Jersey. That's for top one diabetes, for adult top one diabetes. Um, you know, for the children top one diabetes trials, we got a FDA approval last year in November. Um, because COVID-19, they delay this uh, uh, trial. Hopefully, you know, we can start this children trial soon, uh, in early next year at Hackensack okay. Medical Center. And that's when you'll start um, enrolling maybe in January or February 2021? Yes, we hope so, yes. And how large will that study be, do you know? You know, that's the way, um, you know, I recruit a recruiter, uh, this 25 uh, treated group and the 25 uh, control group is totally 50. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, and then I guess sort of, you know, can you put your work that you've done and what you've seen to date um, in the clinic and in the lab in context of, you know, the current body of work around the, you know, the impact of stem cells on the autoimmunity found in type one diabetes. You know, um, you know, over the last uh, ten years, you know, through multi-center international clinical trials, you know, we demonstrated stem cell educated therapy. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, you know, working for type one diabetes. Uh, uh, so uh, can you know uh, correct the autoimmunity? Also improve beta cell function. Okay. 
uh, we learned is the sooner to get the stem cell decay therapy to correct the autoimmunity, the better chance to get a full recovery. You know, uh, some patients you can offer insulin for early treatment with stem cell decay therapy. So do you think that it would be advantageous to um, recruit some patients that actually just had one um, autoantibody or one biomarker and, and, you know, enroll them in, in a study like this? Or is that even in your, are you, are you thinking about that? No, I don't think uh, that's not, that's not important, you know? So, you know, you know, some, even some type one diabetic patient, they don't have autoantibodies, but there's T cell mediated autoimmunity, okay? Mm -hmm. It also causes type one diabetes, okay? Yeah. So that's, uh, we know the stem cell adequate therapy works for T cells, also uh, can sub B cells, okay? So that's, um, doesn't matter, you know, how many antibody positive, I think uh, we can, uh, you know, provide the treatment. Okay. You know, we do see the improvement. Yeah, I just wonder because, you know, if you were thinking that the earlier they have access to this uh, stem cell uh, educator, the better outcomes might be yeah. possible. So then if someone is just sort of starting down the path towards type 1 diabetes, maybe they have one or two um, autoantibodies, right? Once you have two, that's once they have three, right? So then they're, they're early in their progression towards the disease. I just wondered if, uh, if that might be a group of uh, patients that might be a, of interest to treat. Yeah, you know, the early, you know, the better, you know, they have some more residue, better cell mass left over. So if yeah. you treat this patient earlier, you just clear the islet environment to remove this enemy from the islet beta cells, then provide more chance to rescue these beta cells to recovery. So, that's we learned this from our clinical studies. Okay, the sooner the better. And and so, what would be the soonest you would think you could you could use this technology to address a, a progression towards type one? You know, uh, for type one diabetes, you know, it's complicated. You know, uh, different person have different uh, response. You know, some uh, patient, uh, you know, beta cell function declined very quickly. Some is, you know, slowly. So we use the fasting C peptide as a threshold. Okay, like uh, more than 0.3 uh, nanogram per ml as a threshold. Based yeah. on our experience, if you fasting C peptide is more than 0.3 nanogram per ml. Uh, always show very good response after stem cell therapy. Okay, if that's... less than this, you know, the beta cell, you know, they show response, but you need, need more time to recovery. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you use that as your entry point, really. Yes. Um, okay. That's really interesting. How do you, um, I guess, looking back over all these studies and the work you've done, what's sort of been surprising to you? You know, I, you know, through the clinical studies and the basic research, you know, I learned a lot, you know, I appreciate all the patient, our clinical team and the doctors and nurse, you know, they collaborate, they support. Okay. Um, you know, we work together, you know, we found some very interesting, you know, unexpected phenomena. Okay. You know, like, uh, yeah, first, you know, we know for, from children trial, we see a low percentage of children um, at a young age, like a 10 years old or even less than 10 years old, they don't show good response to stem cell therapy. Hmm. They are in a beta cell function decline very quickly. We don't know the reason why. You know, potentially these children, their immune system not mature. Okay, because you know most for our human, you know most immune system, you know they mature, you know after thirteen or fourteen. Okay. Yes. So for young children, maybe their immune system not mature yet. So at that stage, you know receiving stem cell therapy maybe not good timing. So we don't know yet. So that's uh, we needed to do more research, figure out uh, the mechanism, uh, how to improve the clinical efficacy in these younger children, like uh, uh, seven years old, or three years old. Yeah, yeah trying to but, establish the window of opportunity. Yes, that's uh, one thing. You know, another thing. You know, I think we learn this uh, from clinical trials. You know, uh, different population has different. Uh, 
beta cell regeneration potential. Yes. You know, we try to improve, uh, you know, um, the beta cell regeneration through our research. You know, we do make some progress through um, uh, my research at a uh, uh, Center for Discovery Innovation uh, in New Jersey. So we make some program. We find that use the mitochondria can reprogram uh, the beta cells, improve beta cell regeneration. So mm. that's uh, we want to explore this, you know, in the future clinical study. That's very interesting. Yeah. And and when you mean the mitochondria can reprogram the beta cell, do you mean like turn it back on if it's if it's sort of a quiescent if it's under attack by immune uh, by autoimmune in in the context of autoimmunity? If the beta cell maybe sort of just goes quiet while the immune cells are around, are you saying that that if you remove that immune insult, then maybe you, the the mitochondria can help turn it back on? Yes, you know mitochondria is uh, more powerful than the traditional concept. Okay, so it's not only the powerhouse. Okay, you know in the last couple of years, my lab did some research. We found the mitochondria itself okay has has immune modulation potential okay they can suppress t cells okay we already demonstrated that okay mitochondria also can release into the purple blood okay they can circulate in the human blood okay this universal uh, phenomena we demonstrated this in human blood in cold blood even in the, the some mammal like a cow or a horse blood is circulating in the blood okay so we did, we did some uh, experimental studies we use the eyelid use, use the fresh uh, isolated human eyelid okay we treated with the mitochondria from uh, you know, places okay so the mitochondria can uptake by the beta cells okay they can stimulate the beta cell proliferation okay so we also that through the histology studies is uh, the pancreatic slides from a, a diabetic patient you know we compare with healthy donors we we find uh, you know the the places can migrate to the eyelid uh, potentially release smart country uh, can stimulate uh, the beta cell regeneration. This may be happening in the honeymoon stage at the initially when patient diagnosed this. This show the compensation. Okay, if this compensation lost, okay, maybe they can you know uh, get worse. Okay, so how, that's, how, that's fascinating. Uh, um, how do you um, you know hypothesize or even see in the lab how the mitochondria are getting taken up by the beta cells? Are they just uh, endocytosed or some other way? No, they have some molecule. Uh, in the mitochondria, express a lot of uh, the surface molecule, the adhere molecules, like a fibronectin. Okay, so they can, they can, you know, we use the, some uh, technique. We can label this mitochondria. We tracking them. They can, you know, we do the transfer experiment. They can, you know, this mitochondria can pass through the, the membrane. Okay, they can update by the eyelid beta cells. Okay, through the you know, there's some surface molecule, the interaction, they can not, you know, randomly uptake, you know, there's some uh, molecule mechanisms involved in this process. Yeah. Yeah, so it's specific. Yes. Yeah, that is very interesting. I think that, um, you know, like uh, in muscle cells or other cells that are really uh, metabolically active, sometimes yeah. the mitochondria can split. Yeah. And then there's more, right, in that cell type to to help with um, increased metabolic need. But yes. the idea of met, uh, mitochondria that are sort of you know introduced to be taken up and and provide a, sort of almost like a metabolic rescue is really interesting. I'll have to look for that paper. Where can I find that paper? Yeah, I can send you the paper. You know, we know we found this. Uh, you know, uh, for eyelid work, I just mentioned that we published uh, in stem cell translation medicine a couple of years ago. You know, recently my postdoc uh, Hai Bo Yu, he did another amazing studies. Uh, you know, we can use this uh, mitochondria from places can reprogram uh, the peripheral blood insulin producing cells. We call PBIPC. This uh, uh, can make insulin. Okay, they can reprogram this cell 
turn to pluripotent stem cell. Mm. They can give rise to neuronal cells, uh, hematopoietic stem cells. You know, uh, you know, also like uh, uh, retinal uh, pigment epithelial cells for the eye blindness. Yeah. Okay, so really pluripotential. So, you know, we did some studies. You know, very interesting. You know. Um, Paper. So we demonstrated the mitochondria can enter into the cell. If we can penetrate the nuclear membrane, go into the cell, the nuclear, reprogram the cell. Hmm. Okay, yeah. that's really interesting. I'll definitely highlight that paper huh. along with this podcast because I'm sure people are be really curious to learn more. Thank um, you. I just wonder, you know, if you have, you know, uh, are you taking? Um, postdocs or graduate students at this time if young scientists are interested in learning more about your work can they contact you via email and discuss it or what's the um you know are you open to that i guess yes definitely you know i i'm uh, open you know i'm i uh, like to work with the young scientists you know um uh, discuss you know some uh, issues work together you know uh you know, I have a lab at the uh, Center for Discovery Innovation in New Jersey. Uh, you know, uh, I have a postdoc uh, or PhD students can work in my lab. So, you know, uh, we try to improve, uh, you know, um, the clinical efficacy of stem cell therapy through our research. Well, that, you know, that sounds great. And if I guess if any of our audience is very interested, we'll provide um, your email and you can reach out to Dr. Zhao and speak to him. Um, at length about some of the protocols or techniques or even, you know, ideas you may have. So thank you again, Dr. Zhao, for speaking with us today. I so appreciate it. It's fascinating work, and we'll definitely be looking forward to seeing what your newest trials discover. Nice talk to you. Thank you. Thank you.